Hey Glam Crew, it's your girl, Nikki the Glam Teacher. Unfortunately, this video is not um, brought on by happiness. There has been another death in the surgery community. This death uh, was by Dr. D, who is also Dr. Desina, Desinia, I don't know y'all, I do not know how to pronounce these names. No disrespect. This video is not a bashing video. I don't bash. This video is not to persuade you to go to this particular doctor or not. This is just to inform you so that you can make your own decisions. And also, I don't know the doll. I haven't done much research or anything. I don't even know much about Dr. D, Dr. Desenia, Desenia, whatever they call him. I just always hear this crazy bad negative stuff about him i have read some positive stuff about him i had my surgery sister for my first round she went to him and she looked cold y'all she looked cold but again that was like her second or third round <clears throat> and i'm not saying your second or third round go to more high risk doctors but at least you you've had your feet wet you kind of know the ins and outs so maybe you're willing to go that route Honestly, with a doctor like this one, um, he's just too fresh in the game and had so many deaths. Whereas Dr. Cabral, he's been doing this like 25, 30 years. And let's say he's had 100 deaths. Now, I'm just saying 100 deaths within 25 years. And then you have this Dr. D, who in, let's say, 10 years has had 100 deaths. So it kind of balances out to where... Cabral doesn't have that many deaths, right? But let's say, let me inform y'all a little bit more. You shouldn't just look at doctors and say, oh, does this doctor have a death? Or does that doctor have a death? I can't go to him, da 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 You could be that first death, okay? And if that's the case, do you have your will prepared? Do you have life insurance prepared? Do you know the cost that it takes, the amount it takes to fly your body back from the DR to the U.S.? or wherever you're from. Do you, does your family have that money on hand or are they gonna be on GoFundMe praying and saying, oh, you were this and that and kumbaya. Y'all, come on, don't play with your life like this. Also, you need to look into figuring out why these deaths happened. And I don't see a lot of YouTube videos that go into detail about why deaths happen with plastic surgery. I just always hear, do your research, do your research, do your research. And it's like, what am I researching exactly? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to break down some stuff for y'all. Okay. So, from a lot, and my heart is pounding y'all because this is crazy that this has been happening as much as it has been happening and the reasoning that the doctors the doctors teams what i'm reading um is mainly because they say the death is because overdose and you're kind of thinking like is it really overdose and let me just also mention i don't know the full details at all i was not in the operating room or in dr i think when this happened i was in costa rica enjoying life baby but I don't know the cause it is. I don't know this doll. I haven't researched enough. It's just I've been getting a lot of different questions and emails from different dolls. And I've seen an increase in my plastic surgery videos that I have on my channel. So I have um, my main video that I suggest you go watch is know before you go. So before you have plastic surgery, you need to know a lot of those things in that video. I'm going to link it in the description box. Please go watch that. I'm not a medical professional, so everything that I say, make sure you double check, you fat check, you triple check, all of that, okay? So, they are saying that overdose is like the main thing that is causing death um, for plastic surgery, right? And it's because dolls are supposedly bringing in illegal drugs, Percocets, I always hear Percocet, Percocet. Y'all, my round one, what did I have? I actually had Tylenol 3 prescribed to me, I believe, and ibuprofen. I didn't get any pain meds in the DR. My second round, though, I did have DR narcotics. Is that narcotics? People are always saying the pain medicine in DR is not strong. 
I don't believe that because my second round, I was not in no pain and I had pain meds from the pharmacy. So I'm gonna insert a picture right here. This is what you need to ask your doctor in DR to prescribe you. Lots of loxofen, L-O-X-O-F-E-N, loxofen. That, from my understanding, is equivalent to what we have in the U.S. that is called Tylenol-3. Tylenol-3 is like a high dosage of antihistamine. Did I say that right? And it also has a little bit of codeine in it. Not enough to get you addicted, but enough to, you know, help with the pain. And in between that, take ibuprofen, okay? And I was just fine with the lox loxofen that they gave me in DR. You don't need a prescription for it. You walk into the pharmacy and get it, or your recovery house can order it for you. That is one of the top causes of death when women are getting plastic surgery in the Dominican Republic. That's lipo, BBL, breast agreement, tummy tug, all of that. The next top cause that I see a lot is not being honest about pre-existing conditions. Pre-existing conditions could be asthma, you're diabetic, you have lupus, you might have HIV, any of those type of pre-existing things. You need to be upfront and honest with your doctor about it. That way you have some type of treatment plan in place before surgery and your doctor and the staff know what to do to go along with this um, pre-existing condition, okay? Now let me pause there and rewind for a moment. Now, when you're bringing your pills and supplements from home to the DR for surgery, um, try not to pack any narcotics. Take what the doctor gives you, but you might bring your own iron, vitamin C, whatever, whatever. Take a picture of it and write on the bottles or have a list that says, okay, I'm taking vitamin C, two tablets every morning. Um, this bottle has my vitamin C. That way, everything is labeled, you know, what's what. I know some recovery houses, my first recovery house, the nurses wanted to take my medicine and give it to me. But I didn't like how they did that because they would just go from person to person, not cleaning their hands, not cleaning gloves. They was mixing stuff together. And mm -mm. I want to know what you're giving me, why, and what time is it? Like, Because I need stuff to be at the right time. And they just weren't 100% consistent with it. My second round, them nurses really ain't bother me. I already been there, done that. Um, I established a good relationship with them and what my expectations were with them. So they really didn't bother me. And I took my pills and medicine as needed. They did come remind me like, hey, did you take your whatever, whatever? Or it's time for your um, injection, the uh, heparin shot, which is for blood clots. Okay. So, and they gave me the heparin shot because I was not giving myself a shot. Boom. So let's fast forward to what I was talking about with pre-existing conditions. So there was a case with my first round doctor, Dr. Mannion, and this was like maybe 2018, 2019. There was a girl that was having surgery and she was a diabetic. And from my memory, she did tell him up front, like, hey, um, I'm diabetic, da, da 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 whatever you have to say and discuss with your doctor. I was not there, so don't quote me. I'm just giving a hypothetical or like, you know, a real life example, but I'm not too 100% on the facts because this was a long time ago and I was not there in the room when it all happened. So, however, um, after surgery, or you know, I'm sorry, it was not my doctor. It was not Dr. Mignon. It was a Mercedes doll. It was Dr. Mercedes because that was going to be one of my options, but I ended up staying with Mignon. Anyways, so after surgery, everything was good, I suppose but her insulin levels were too high or too low, blood sugar, something wasn't right. So they gave her too much insulin. They gave her too much or whatever. And that caused her to go into a coma or something. Now maybe the doctor's team was not clear on what diabetes was or how it affected her body. Maybe her body wasn't um, leveled out and under control at the time of surgery. So make sure you have those pre-existing conditions under control and your doctor, your normal doctor, your PCP in the States or wherever you're from is clear on what you're getting done, what to do if something is not leveled right, what number it needs to be at, you know, just get like a detailed description box. Also, another thing, if you're a smoker, a lot of people can have not necessarily death, 
but it can happen. You have complications from being a smoker. Stop smoking. I would suggest minimum six weeks before surgery. Like, is smoking really that more important than your life? It's not. It shouldn't be. I know some things you can be addicted to, but this is your life. I'm sure you have a family, a friend, someone that cares and loves you. And they don't want to see you go. So take this serious. Don't just be thinking, I want a fat booty, a nice body, da 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 I didn't have these kids. I didn't worked out. I didn't lost this weight. It's time for me to do something for me. So boom, I'm getting my tummy tuck this year. I got my money. I'm getting it done. Be patient, you know? Be patient. Your time is coming, but make sure that your body is right. Make sure your hemo levels, low blood, can also be a cause of death and having complications, y'all. If you don't have the money for the blood, they're going to look at you like, hmm, what you want us to do? You don't got your money for the blood. Make sure your funds is together. Make sure your hemo is up. Still take your supplements after surgery. That's big. After surgery, still take your supplements, your vitamins, your folic acid, all of that, okay? Um, because if you and if you need a blood transfusion and you don't have the money, you're kind of put on the back burner for people with money. Yeah, they kind of care about you, but at the same time, this is a business and they need their money. They need their money, okay? Along with that, get a recovery house that cares about you. Because my first round, my doctor was like MIA for the first couple days. I didn't get no directions. Post-op, he was not there to help me. Thankfully, my recovery house stepped up and was like my voice for me. Also, my massage therapist back in Atlanta when I was in DR, she was on the phone. But, 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 but. I love her, Nana. Yeah, but she was trying to figure out, like, what's going on? Why is this doll being ignored? She's, you know, there. What are, you got? What are her directions? With, with the, 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 the. So make sure you have people there that can speak up for you when you're not able to speak up for yourself, okay? Another big reason that causes complications and possible death is blood clots. You need to get your heparin injection. Um, my first round, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have directions or a list of what I needed and didn't need. So, um, but from my research, I knew I needed to take heparin injections, but how many do I need? I don't know. What time do I take it? I don't know. I didn't get clear directions. So my recovery house, recovery house staff was telling me this, um, prior dogs was telling me this. And then I kind of just formulated with how my body was feeling. Okay. I probably should do 10 shots. Um, and then my last shot I take on my day that I'm leaving before I get on the plane. My first round, I was getting like a big cut. I got a tummy tuck. So I stayed in the country for 18 days. Sorry, I'm blinking like crazy. Um, I got somewhere to go and I'm trying to rush this video. So I stayed in the country for 18 days. I didn't want to come home with any complications. I didn't try to rush the process and get back home and then have to deal with stuff on my own. So I made it to where I could stay longer, to where I could be a little bit more independent when coming home. Those blood clots, you need to be wearing compression socks. Some compression socks don't apply enough compression. You might need something tighter. Listen to your body because sometimes in the middle of the night, I was like losing circulation in my legs because one pair of compression socks that I had were not were too tight. They were too tight. So the middle of the night, I had to take them off asked the nursing staff to put on my other pair. And then one night I peed on myself and they did not want to like wash my stuff right then and there and hand wash it in the sink. This was like my second day post-op. I barely could walk. So me trying to hand wash some pissy compression socks. Mm -mm. So I took them off, which was wrong on my part. And then the next morning, my boo Suni, that's one of the staff at the recovery house. She was looking like, uh-uh. She got them socks together, put some socks on me, boom. You need your compression socks, dolls, okay? You need them so you're not getting blood clots. Um, and I believe that causes, ooh, like I told you, I'm not a medical professional. I do not know the medical terms with this stuff. But it causes something in your lungs, I believe, where like it clots up and you can't breathe, some type of respiratory issue. Y'all go Google that and figure that out before you go have surgery. All right. 
Also, um, bring back up compression socks. That way, if you were like me and you have an accident on yourself, you can switch out and you have a clean pair of compression socks. You can find them compression socks on Amazon for like $10 to $15. The DR is going to charge you $25, $30 for them. Your doctor, depending what's included in your package, you might get a free, comp free pair of compression socks. Um, but I know my first video that I talked about my packing and supply list, I had what um, HZ or whatever sizing measurement those compression socks go in. I talked about the difference between which compression compression socks and why and how it benefited. So go check that video out, my supply list, so you can kind of figure out which compression sock works for you. Or guess what? Ask your doctor, your doctor's assistant, or a surgery coordinator. Now there's a lot. Of free information out here especially on YouTube and different groups um, different medical websites like real self and you can look up different supply lists and figure this out or you can also um, just do research and get free information okay but if you really don't have the time to research this and you're desperate to get surgery which I don't think you should be desperate for something that technically is not life or death surgery but hey that's your prerogative then get a surgery coordinator okay you don't need one but get a surgery coordinator if you can't dig, dig deep in this and make sure you're asking questions because some surgery coordinators are out to just get that money it's a business like i said so they trying to get that money y'all um but some surgery coordinators honestly do care about you and it's not always about a check they might say like hey like based on what you're telling me in your circumstances I kind of think you should wait it out, stack up some more money, or I think you could lose 30 more pounds and then you'll be set for surgery. Losing that weight will make a difference with your outcome and your results and how you heal. Honestly, it does. The ability to get up and walk and things of that sort after surgery, your weight really affects that. And some of them recovery house nurses are little, little ladies, so you this big BMI 40 and you didn't have surgery and you want somebody you fall who, who about to be breaking yourself picking you up like that baby you could have lost 50 more pounds what you doing alright and I'm not even trying to be funny I'm being for real because I'm a bigger doll and I just imagine like who picking me up like y'all I'm three of y'all <laughs> not for real but lord in tune with your body if you know you normally don't get headaches say something if you're feeling any type of anything say something okay also a lot of dolls have been asking me um who's the safe doctor without no deaths and i'm just like what everybody you you have to start somewhere and ask questions i know my doctor dr diaz that i had for the second round from my research he didn't have deaths um I loved my experience with him, Dr. Manuel Diaz. He was kind. Everything he said he was gonna do, he did. I didn't get hit with, oh, you gotta pay for this, you gotta pay for that, da, da, da. He walked me into surgery. He pushed me on into surgery, y'all. He smiled. It was a very great experience. He was in contact with me, him and his staff. Communication was on point. I got sent home with paperwork telling me what to do, what not to do. The driver knew everything that was going on. I knew what time my appointments were beforehand so I could prepare for it. Yeah, it was a very good experience. Like a complete 360, is that the word you're right? 360 from my first round. I loved it. So if you're asking me for any doctor recommendations, I would say Dr. Diaz. Um, I haven't researched a lot of doctors in a long time because I'm just not interested right now in the third round. But yeah, I hope this video helps somebody out and helps you to realize that there's a lot of stuff that you need to be looking at and researching before you go get your dream body, okay? Please be mindful of those things to look for. If y'all have any more questions, go ahead and send me an email. Follow me on Instagram. I'm always open to answering surgery questions. Thank you for watching. Bye, y'all.